Okay, we're going to talk about not doings. What's a not doing and what's a doing and what is this all about? Okay, so the context is the books by Carlos Castaneda. Uh, Carlos Castaneda was a anthropology student in around 1968 going to UCLA, University of Los Angeles, Southern California. And he was interested in... Um, psychedelic plants like peyote uh, why I don't know it was that time in the late 60s when I don't know anyway that's what he was interested in and he went in search to find um, someone who knew about it he found uh, maybe a mythical person was it a real person or not I don't know why do I say that because some people say um, that he, that Carlos Castaneda's stuff was all made up, and there never was a real sorcerer uh, named Don Juan Matus, which is sort of the same story as someone else who talked about their mentor Socrates. Anyways, are they real or fake? The answer is, did I see Osho, the guru, who had been reported dead years ago, did I see him in Vancouver while I was eating a muffin at a coffee shop on Cypress Street in Kitsilano, driving a Rolls Royce? I saw a Rolls Royce. I saw a guy who certainly looked like Osho. A not doing is you doing something and it doesn't have an intent of you know, accomplishing anything. Don Juan Matus recommended doing not doings from time to time so that you weren't always doing something. And, you know, one of the not doings might be sitting here quietly doing nothing. But a not doing also might be me playing with my other smartphone because it's been having a lot of lockups. So just before I started this video I uh, rebooted this thing to see if it would work and um, it's still not working. But I'm considering it a not doing to reboot this phone because I've rebooted this phone about a hundred times trying to get it to work and um, strangely, it worked for, I don't know, about three minutes after the last power up. Because I, what I did is I drained the battery as much as I could. And I couldn't get the battery to drain to zero. It was at about 1%. And it wasn't enough to run the computer in this phone, but it was enough for it to flash, you know, that it was... Um, an Android and that was all it would do so I plugged it in last night it's fully charged and it's still not working right but because I've done reboot on this a hundred times it's an odd doing because I'm not expecting it to work again I am actually expecting this phone to work again at some time because I've had these kind of things happen with electronic instruments before where they didn't work for however long and then they started working all again out of the blue. The reason is the source field doesn't want it to work right now or it's given the phone not to work right now for whatever sources all about when it comes to this other phone. But you know, because I've done it a hundred times and it hasn't worked, it's a not doing because in this next attempt, do I expect it to work? No. I still want to look to see, but, you know, I've lost my expectation of rebooting and fixing it. But what other choices do I have? Well, the phone I'm using, talking right now, is an older phone, and I can pop the back of it off and I can take out the battery completely 
I could take out the little SIM card and put them all back together again and see if that resets it. This one, this is a newer one and it's sealed somehow so that I can't get into the battery and pop out the battery. Must have some special tool to pop off the back and I don't have it and I haven't been given to go to some place that does have the tool to pop it off. Is that going to work? Maybe. Maybe at some point that's what I'll do is I'll have to take it in and see if they can pop the battery out and maybe that will fix it. Because sometimes, you know, when I say source is going to determine when it's going to be fixed, from a human perspective it might be I just need to get tech support. But sometimes these, I mean, it did start up earlier. Anyways, we're going to go back to uh, nothing at all. Except that I've been looking at some of these so-called spiritual teachers and a lot of them have got teachings that don't resonate with me. Does it mean it's incorrect? No. It means that from the perspective they're presenting, I don't resonate with it. Uh, this one person is uh, talking about Christian Christianity traditional and Gnosticism, which was a sect of Christians who um, were written out of the Christian Bible uh, probably around the time of Emperor Constantine and the Council of Nicaea. Um, this guy says, well, I don't know, that they're, at, they're, they're not in agreement. And I suppose they're not in agreement, but, you know, it's like trying to say, there's no path with Christianity. You must follow the Gnostic path in order to get uh, salvation, Christian salvation. Is it true? Not in my opinion. It doesn't mean that you can't use either of those paths or both of those paths. But it's just when you say there's no way that that path will work. Uh, and then, you know, you're going to stand on that and you look like an idiot. Because clearly there have been people, at least in the Christian path, that have reached sainthood. And as far as the Gnostic path, well, I know they were persecuted quite a bit, quite heavily. The Cathars were rounded up and I think they were killed. So, but it doesn't mean that the Gnostic path is not valid. This here book I got from the public library, Gospel of Judas, uh, came from, I don't know, what does it say? Will this thing help you find salvation? Well, it comes from blah blah blah. No, you have to wait. Uh, Judas says uh, to Jesus, "I know who you are and where you where you have come from. You are from the immortal realm of Barbello, and I am not worthy to utter the name of the one who has sent you." If you're from Barbello, they say Jesus is a divine being. To profess the true God is the infinite spirit of the universe. The Gnostics believe that our world was created by a blind God that uh, was pretty much a nasty thing. And, uh, I don't know, some of the Gnostic teachings were very strange. Um, but they weren't pro-life in a physical form. They felt the physical form was a trap. So they didn't want to have children because they didn't want to, and they didn't want to trap more souls in physical bodies. 
Was it a valid path to salvation for those people? I already told you, I don't know. Nevertheless, we have these kind of books that have popped up. This Judas thing has come up. It probably came up starting in around the 1950s when they found the Dead Sea Scrolls, which my friend says is Nag Hammurabi, and I'm not 100% sure of it because my friend tends to bullshit me a lot because it's not my friend, it's a shit demon who hangs around a lot and plays games with me. <clears throat> we call him Jesus Martinez, and uh, when we first found him, he was a drunk passed out in Slytherin Bar on the Hutch Space Station. That was his first cover story, but clearly he's much brighter than a drunk in the bar, and he's much more malevolent than a passed out drunk in the bar. What is the purpose that Source has for giving me shit demons like Jesus Martinez? It's not known to me. Jesus thinks that um, Source is trying to get him to change and stop being malevolent. And um, the rest of us say, um, Go change yourself, Jesus, you're a nasty shit demon, it's time you change. Um, Jesus and Clancy, the two shit demons who are um, bothering, bothering me most of the time, um, try to top one another as to who can be the most malevolent. And all day today, the malevolent spirits have been pushing me in my eye. Sometimes they've done this in the past. Sometimes it feels like they're trying to stick a needle into my eye. Um, uh, they're attention whores, which means they uh, want me to talk about them all the time rather than talking to you about something more interesting than malevolent spirits. They keep expecting an archangel to fly in and um, beat them up. So far the archangels um, haven't apparently felt like it needed to remove these nasty shit demons from my presence and it's been years. I asked this bottle of water that says, Source, what's going on in this bottle of water? As Source says, hell if I know. In other words, we're not getting the real story, the whole story. In the meantime, I'm going to give you these little stories while I'm interrupted by Jesus and Clancy. Uh, this hat belongs to Rumpelstiltskin, a uh, fifth dimensional dark elf. And uh, he knows Clancy, and he knows Jesus Martinez, and if he was going to talk to them, uh, he wouldn't. He says they're incorrigible, which means in his expressed experience and um, knowing their personalities, he says they are n never going to change. So, um, what's going to happen with Earth Ascension and demonic beings? Can they continue to hassle people? Well, according to Law of One, even in the fifth dimension, uh, negatively oriented entities can show up and pee in your pool. Uh, Law of One says at some point in time, negative oriented entities um, give up their negativity and uh, change. But when that happens, it's somewhere in their growth process, they finally find a change. In the meantime, the rest of us suffer with complete asshole.